Hey everyone, welcome to Brightcast Studio Tips and Tricks. Today I'm going to show you how to use the Elgato Stream Deck to control the Blackmagic Atom Television Studio Classic. And as a special bonus, I'm going to show you how to use the Elgato Stream Deck to control the Behringer Xair XR12. Come join me and let's do the unboxing of the Stream Deck. Okay, first we're going to look at the Stream Deck. It comes in a really good, sturdy, quality box. Really good graphics. You see there's like a foam in here. There's no plastic. There's no uh, plastic cover. So here's the Stream Deck device. Looks really good. And a small booklet. I'll show you that. Comes out with getting started. There is no software in here. You have to go out and download it. Really sturdy foam. So get the Stream Deck out of here, like this. Excuse me. Get the Stream Deck out. Uh, as you see, there's a twist tie here. Undo the twist tie. And a uh, protector for the USB. We won't need that. And a pretty healthy long cable on the Stream Deck. Also inside the box is a stand and a little warranty card. And again, here's the Stream Deck. It's very sturdy metal. There's some standoffs here that will allow it to be a different height on your desk. We could just do this. There's the Stream Deck in its stand. It would sit on a desk like this. So now we're going to use the USB to plug in the Elgato Stream Deck into the laptop here. And you see it's going to power up. I guess that's a basic Elgato graphic that comes up when it gets powered up to show you that it's live. Okay, so where do we get the BitFocus software? Well, you can find it at bitfocus.io. And if you pull this up, you notice it says you're probably looking for our companion app. And that is what we're looking for. So bitfocus.io slash companion. And here you've got companion everything under control what does it do it takes the elgato stream deck and talks to professional devices in your workflow there's a lot of information here on the front page here's a list current support here's atom support here behringer xr mr midas which is what i'm using and you download the latest release just click there so here's all the info on github slash bitfocus companion this is where all the info is there is a stream deck plugin for using with the stream deck software there's the getting started manual and the mac stable build and the windows stable build 64 bit there are no linux builds at the moment but i would hope that eventually we'd see that take a look at the documentation here which is very helpful explaining to you how to set up has several screenshots. Under Windows, you would run this 64-bit executable. Under the Mac, you have it in a zip file, which expands, expands the companion app that you would then drag and drop into your applications folder. I've already got the app started. Once you start it up, it looks like this, this bit focus. You can leave your network interface to the local port 127.0.0.1 so that's the network port it would use to talk to the rest of the network and the outside world to your atoms that usually you don't need to change although you can change it also the default port is 8000 you can hide and send that up into your tray same with windows we'll just go ahead and launch the GUI and it opens up a web browser Now, as you see here, I've got my connection set up. I am connected to my Atom and connected to my Behringer XR12. If I open that up, this is where you put in your target IP for the Atom that you're trying to control. 
over here, I've got the same thing where I've got the XR instance and telling it what its target IP is as well. And let's program a button, shall we? So if I click on the button here, I can set button style, I can either do text or PNG image. I'll go ahead and do PNG image and we'll browse. And I've made some PNG image, so I will take my cam too. There it is. And as you notice, it's a 72 by 58 button that you need to uh, you need to conform. And the companion software leaves a little area up here to give you uh, a status if the button is activated or not. Here you can put the colon text in, aligned in the center. Now I can go down here and I can find the atom. And I have set input on program, set input on preview, aux bus, upstream and downstream keys, cut operation, auto transition, and even powerful run macros. So I'll go ahead and do set input on program and we'll just set that to cam input two. Uh, notice we have all of the inputs listed, available media player, color bars. On instant feedback, we can change colors from program. The colors will respond from the status of the atom itself. So I actually like to go down here and make it red. And this is gonna be input two. So whatever the status is, the response. And as you see, cam two is live. You see that it does show up. And that's, uh, that's really all that it takes. So I just wanted to show you here. Notice I actually made this on cam three. Cam three is active. And in fact, it has these red colon bars there to show that that's a active light. And if I go up here and hit erase, it'll say, okay, Boom. the button goes away. Now for the on air bugs, lower thirds, I want to show you how that works over here. You can see we're on air with one of the downstream keys. You can see that bug there. And then if I press it again, it's off. You need to set downstream key to on air, on air, what number key it is. This is one. I have two keys in the Atom Television Studio. And then you also have to set downstream key, key up off actions, set downstream key on air to off key one. If I go to my buttons, you'll see I have the latch toggle on, which I'll show you what that looks like over here. Note the latch toggle switch which then initiates that colored background right there to show you that your bug is toggled on or toggled off, whatever is in your downstream key. There is an import export configuration. You can export and import configuration files and then update pages or move presets. There are also some preset layouts for the Blackmagic Design Atom. If you notice here on presets, so if you go in, you can set up preview buttons, you can set up program buttons, aux, and also your downstream and upstream keys. Over on the left-hand side of Companion, you can use the emulator. So you see, you don't even actually need the Stream Deck, although obviously the hardware makes it so much better. Here you create web buttons that will actually give you the same functionality that you would get here. That works through the web interface as well. You can interface a tablet using this programming. And then you can find the bugs and features on GitHub, a Facebook group you can join, a Slack chat you can join, and you can also donate to the project as well. You'll notice the BitFocus Companion uses three buttons, page up, page down. You could change that, but it does make going through pages very easy. So if I go to the second page, I've got my Behringer XR XR12 mixer set up. I can cue a channel that's playing back a track on the USB playback, and you'll probably hear some bossa nova music right now. And I can mute that track back up like that. And I've got a couple fun effects that we may or may not use, like this echo effect. I'll unmute that. And uh, kind of a crazy low voice effect. 
anyway, that's just stuff that I use for particular production. So I hope you enjoyed watching the Elgato Stream Deck controlling the Black Magic Atom Television Studio and the Behringer XR12 Mixer. Until next time, bye-bye.